for the audience definitely uh, you are more interested on sports science and uh, definitely you you may think of taking a career in sports science you know you will be a lot of questions that whether sports science is the right career or if yes what are the other options and obviously sports science is the new one a lot of lot of queries you might be having in your minds which is right and when i talk about sports science technically there is no better person than ramji to be very honest who can actually guide you and ramji thank you very much that you have actually taken out time in your weekend and hand come uh, pleasure now I, if i do not give a proper introduction to your profile to the stature that you hold the many no, feathers no, of the cap no, no first <laughs> No, 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 no. It will become. Too, it too it will be really injustice because see, we we know you, but for the audience, I'm sure they might have googled you and everybody in the sports they science know about you. They are not smart enough without. They are not smart enough to Google and check out what. what let I'm me guessing. let <laughs> me give a quick let me let me give a quick intro because there is a catch for the audience. So for the audience, uh, we we all know that India were fortunate to win 2011 World Cup. and definitely if we talk about the fitness level of india be the likes of sachin dhoni washin and all he is the man behind we talk about mumbai indians we talk about csk this is the man behind we know the person narayan kartikeyan he is the man behind so he 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 wears a lot of caps he is is that stature person now probably one of the best part what i would like to say proudly that when we at ism wanted to start the sports science course he is one of the key person who actually worked in the curriculum strongly with us and not only helping in the curriculum and actually working in the curriculum he actually comes from chennai to bang bombay he stays here he takes sessions for the existing sports science students including practical i think that is one of the finest thing that whoever is in the sports science in ism is experiences and thank you thank you ranji for everything thank you thank you the pleasure is mine as i told you before it's always a pleasure to talk to people for the audience please uh, be in mute you can uh, switch on your cameras no problem at all but please be in mute to decor you know maintain the decorum otherwise there will be lot of disturbance if you have queries uh, do put in the chat box we will try to cover if if we get time but if we even don't don't get, have a time today or something something like that we will try to have some other seminar or probably on email or something like that we will try to answer your all of the queries that you have fine the first first thing uh, ramji but i would like to know obviously with your recent article and when we are talking about even in when when i remember my time when this sachin or ganguly or laksman or david there 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 was a constant team we obviously heard about the injuries but not as much as we are hearing today there's a lot of like bumra and all we are we are we are hearing a lot about those sports injuries you have written a beautiful article what do you see being a sports science person what do you see where the it is the team india is going wrong or probably if you find the the way sports science professional should be giving it the support at the back end there is a there is a lack of professionalism or lack of knowledge what do you see uh first of all you starting off with a very tricky question <laughs> okay be that as it may uh, um comparing eras is going to be very difficult you know i am not a great fan of comparing eras uh because of so many variables which happen every day because there is so much of uh, evolution happening uh, what do you call uh, uh changes which happen which we like or don't like happening uh, in every walks of life from lifestyle to sports science etc etc having said that there has to be certain process and protocols in place when we are following certain things to call ourselves a professional otherwise it becomes a very rhetoric word and good for instagrams and uh, all those social media hype you know first of all um, uh, i would like to say uh, one thing here before starting embarking on certain things i am not a sports scientist i am a strength and conditioning uh, specific for sports uh, thank you very much for that nice introduction 
if it's going to be a, if i'm going to be called a sports scientist after 25 years of experience i'm more than happy thank you about it and coming back to the topic there are so many uh things which we need to address you know from 2011 to 2023 there's it's it's a huge jump quantum jump in everything so in 2011 the preparation for the world cup started one year ahead in 2010 we started when we were in sri lanka how uh, things have to be worked out what is the goal because it's happening in india everything everything was spot on and i had took a lot of flack for it because i removed all the uh, what do you call uh, sodas and aerated drinks no cheese no fatty item no fried items everything from the dressing room or uh, during uh, during the practice sessions or breakfast etc even in the hotels so the players embarked on it the full credit goes to the players and no man is a not, not no single man is an army because it's a teamwork end of the day they had fantastic uh, uh, support staff uh, team which we all adhered to uh, to one goal that is to win the world cup for india after 23 or 28 25 or 28 years so that proved uh, to be a uh winning concoction coming back over the years uh, at that time there is another variable also those days the uh, social media is not was not very active you know uh, i used to what do you call avoid or uh, request the media people not to come anywhere close to the gym or then uh, our training sessions because uh, certain things have to be kept private certain things have to be kept uh, uh, in a there has to be certain sanctity in certain things you know you see any of the elite athletes top athletes they don't uh, put their workouts on the website for everybody to uh, see or get some make some money out of it or get some brownie points so there was some sort of sanctity in what we did but it paid off similarly in 2013 when we won the uh, champions trophy that was the last trophy which india won in 2013 everything was spot on and it was claimed one of the fittest uh, team uh, indian team uh, ever at that point of time even ms dhoni said that in the uh, interview so what we set up was a good process and protocols and we understood the playing conditions we understood the nuances of the players how fit they are what they need to work on etc 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 because if i go over, Ex- explaining um, uh, about the process and protocol what involved then is going to take just one question <laughs> for you for me to answer your one first question will be enough so rest of the questions uh, i think we have to pass it so currently coming back to current um, scenario i won't blame the players at all i won't blame the players because we as professionals have to take the onus and the responsibility of uh, making the player fit at any stage it all depends on individuals individuals uh, need to be given individualized attention be it diet be it exercise uh, protocols or your fitness testing assessments according to the skill which i have been harping on for a long time uh, one size doesn't fit all so everything even the mental conditioning everything has to be individualized it cannot be a gang bang session uh, for everybody huh? so i am of a very strong belief be a believer in that so having said that i think there is something lacking nobody is taking responsibility for it because any player doesn't want to miss out playing for the country or playing for the franchise because of so many uh, fringe benefits involved uh, i think we need a robust system in place and somebody need to come uh, come out and put their head on the block to take the responsibility to take uh, india to the next level not that we have we have any dearth of talent in our country amazing talent and bcci is doing everything for the players uh, to keep themselves fit and available to play for the country and the franchise is also spending loads of money you know end of the day it's all all about vitamin m2 uh, to keep the players and the team happy in a good environment so end of the day what matters is the support staff the people those who are here those who are going to uh, embark on a sports science uh, uh, whether it's bachelors or masters are doing their research they are the people powered behind the throne 
they need to be spot on in every aspect of sports science, what they're getting involved in, whether it's sports nutrition or a sports physiotherapy or strength and conditioning or athletic trainer or a coach, etc., etc., which is related to high performance or peak performance for the players to peak at the right time at the right place. And I'm sure because uh, uh, the students here and the aspirants here and the trainers or the strength and conditioning coaches or physios and psychologists and nutritionists, those who are uh, aspiring to be here or those who are already there in that profession, I think this is a, a generation which can uh, be a game changer for India, for sure. I am of a very strong belief that we are second to none, whether it is uh, uh, we are talking about grey matter or whether it's uh, physical prowess. So we are second to none, but we need a system in place. Uh, that is the end of the day, process and protocols in place and long-term athletic development and somebody has to take the responsibility. These three bring in professionalism into the system. And uh, as far as injuries are concerned, somebody has to take the responsibility. They have a system specific to India. We cannot have cut and paste workouts, cut and paste protocols, long-term athletic development, whether it's, it's been very successful in Australia or UK or Scandinavian countries or America. You cannot do that because we are different. In, there are around six to seven variables which we are doing. So we need to design what is pertinent to India, Indians, and move on accordingly. Otherwise, we'll be talking about the same thing again and again and again next 10 years, and which we have been doing for 15 years, and we've been called sleeping tigers uh, in sport and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. It's all nice to hear at that point of time, but in reality, it stinks, you know. Uh, uh, we have to talk about the high, highest level games where all the athletes participate and our athletes doing well, like Olympics or World Championship or World Cup, etc., etc. How our athletes are able to avoid injuries and get into peak performance. Uh, that is very, very important, not here and there, uh, flash in the pants. And uh, as expected, uh, so many and uh, over the years, we will conduct an inquiry commission why Indian athletes failed and nobody takes a responsibility that will be thrown in the back burner after two, three years. And again, a new inquiry commission will gone. How many inquiry commissions you will have, man, in your life? You know, somebody has to take the responsibility. And on top of it all, government is doing so much for the sports people. And, you know, this government is doing so much. I'm not a, I'm not trying to get any political in this, but we have seen a robust format of play and people are being held responsible. So, end of the day, the people here are going to be the game changers and make India proud. I think they, I am sure they are, they are for it. Great. I think you have, you have touched upon all the points, like, you know, you talked about the uh, system and processes, you talk about the kind of, you know, probably the lack of knowledge or something like that. Now, obviously, when there, are, there, is, a, there is a specific team, currently, there might be some system and processes, right? And you have been interacting, you have been dealing with the existing sports science professional across. Yeah. What do you see? Do you, do you see they are well equipped? They are at par with the with the, the foreign counterparts, or you see there is a lack of gaps? What do you see? Indian sports science professionals. It is still in a near natal stage. To be very honest, I don't want to give rosy pictures uh, that uh, we are uh, up with the trend. No, see, uh, sports science has been there in India for years. You know. But we are confined only to classrooms and uh, PowerPoint presentations and teaching and churning out loads and loads of physical directors, physical fitness, etc., etc. All those people. But where did we go? Where are? Where did we go all these years? Nowhere, isn't it? So idea is, we are, we have miles to go before we sleep. They are in a different planet. To be very honest, to be very honest, I would say we are 20 to 25 years behind in sports science. The way they are bringing in technology, the way they are bringing analysis to an athlete and without any unwanted interventions and anywhere in the world you can access the information for, for, from an athlete or from the support staff, etc., etc. So, uh, very important to em 
embark on um, uh, sports science with people those who are really passionate those who are educated education plays a very important role in this in our times uh, maybe 20 years back who used to come to strength and conditioning only those uh, we, those who don't have a job they'll become a gym trainer and suddenly they'll call themselves a strength and conditioning trainer or a, now they call themselves sports scientist etc etc we have to go very close to that and our uh, time there was not much of education available in our country you know so even uh, 10 years back not many educational institutions came uh, uh, were uh, available in india for us to do a specialization course i had to go to australia and do it and uh, come it was pretty expensive though now things have changed the entire ecosystems have changed and youngsters are embarking on um, the sports science which is a phenomenal sign you know educated those who are already completed engineering and iit boys you cannot get better than that i am been interacting with uh, the iit uh, uh technology department or sports science department absolutely brilliant you need we need more people like that to, into the ecosystem so that everybody grows you know so that the knowledge is beautifully distributed and we need a lot of research we don't have much research for our athletes and th even though even if we have those research has not been shared to the uh, strength and conditioning or the experts so that they can form their own protocols in place. So we have miles to go, to, to put it in a nutshell. But, you know, I am quite uh, hopeful. Uh, these uh, youngsters from coming out from IISM and others, those who are already there, can take India forward, 100%. Mark my words, 10 years down the line, if we have a webinar or a virtual webinar somewhere, etc., etc., technology may change. I am sure a lot of people will be involved in Olympic sport and uh, winning teams from here. It will be a proud moment for us. Now, I'm hopeful. I'm quite hopeful because when I interact with the existing sports science batch, right, you know, the way they are saying, the way they are learning, I'm quite hopeful that you know, with your guidance and with your associationship, with your you know, lecture series and all, I think ISM will start producing that quality manpower in the sports science vertical. Absolutely. Youngsters are brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. They are multitasking uh, people. Whether it's, And a lot of girls are coming into that, which is a phenomenal sign. Brilliant sign. You know, once they come into the place, they are no-nonsense people. <laughs> you know, they want everything systemized. So, you know, no. it's 100% true. What you're telling is 100% true. I'll, I'll go back slightly at the time when we started working. Obviously, you and me had that discussion. For the audience, we had a great discussion when we started this sports science course. We had a very good discussion with Dr. Anand Joshi. If you don't know Anand Joshi, doc, please search. Uh, he's a pioneer of sports medicine, called, in fact, famous as the Sachin Tendulkar doctor. So, in fact, you know, they they had a great opinion that you know in spite of the fact that a lot of sports science professionals are coming out though india is pro has started producing a bit but quality is not at par and the major problem what what has been observed that lot of or probably the majority who are coming out in the industry as the certificate holders yeah. and there is a dearth need to start a dedicated degree course like bachelors and masters and that's how ISM started, where Dr. Anand Jashi has come and board, Dr. Adil Chagla, Dr. P. Mojumdar, who was the Dean of Sports Authority of India, they all started together. Ramji himself has you know, come on board and you know, helped in the curriculum. Now, Ramji, my, my direct question will be, since there are a lot of certificate programs are available, and we all feel that there is a bachelor's and master's is definitely needed. Obviously, from the industry point of view, where do you see the key difference between a certificate holder in terms of the knowledge and the practicality or the kind of the depth or the rigor level that we are going to impart through bachelors and masters how, okay. how do you see that okay uh, you know dr joshi and uh, we, i love to give a lot of superlatives on him one of the best i have seen you know one of the best professionals amazing personality absolutely brilliant absolutely brilliant so like Dr. Pralayam Mujumdar, again, another iconic figure, you know, fantastic faculty you have. Apart from that, coming back to the certification courses, certification courses are dime a dozen now. You know, you can do online, 
somebody can write the exam for you i know people those who have written that up to level 1 and level up to level 2 doing research somebody will write uh, i know people those who are written for others i know people those who submitted that and got their uh, certification so certification is like 10 standard you know <laughs> that's why it's called bachelors and masters in sports science then get into research etc in the future bachelors will be the basic requirement no this is uh, it's like uh, your certification will be like a vocational uh, courses getting you ceus for the sports science to keep up the points uh, bachelors masters and then loads of research phd students would come into play five years down the line those who are finishing the bachelors and masters they will get into the next level which is a crying need for india you know there as uh, doctor said uh, i am sure there is a lack of uh, uh what do you call that's a huge i won't say there is a it's a wrong word to use there is a huge vacuum between theory and practice in india that is the reason for our failure consistently in all parameters as as far as sport is concerned you know there is a flash in the pan once in a while suddenly there is a huge dip suddenly you go up there is a huge uh, okay india is a superpower in sport here we come india so so what doesn't matter so i end of the day what matters is how you bridge the gap between theory and practice which happens in bachelors in masters and next level is your uh, doctorate phd's research scholars there has to be a culmination of all these factors into uh, play to produce the best result possible because you are dealing with human body you are not dealing with a computer or a robo because that since their human body varies their response to a particular stimulus varies every day every session you have to be very mindful of individualizing every parameter over the period of time otherwise we are shooting in the dark having said that bachelors is going to be the basic degree for them to get involved like bachelors of physics or mathematics or statistics or chemistry etc etc that is going to be the uh, norm basic then comes to your masters then comes your research that's a progression where do you go having said that we need to we need to uh, set up research and interns those who can do research in india for our athlete we need to set up a facility the problem is that we need to set up a facility giving them stipend so that their uh, livelihood is also taken care of then they have a motivation to work now there is currently nothing unless until you are in a job you cannot do an internship which is very sad which is which is not the right uh, ecosystem you are building you need to get give these kid people uh, opportunity to grow you cut off all the life links and tell them tomorrow you have to be a sports scientist or you have to produce gold medal we can go to one of the jewel shops and get some gold medal and come look at china we cannot follow the same principles because their entire system is different but how they came back you know from 80s to 2000s they are in the top 5 in the world you see any sports any countries those who are topping the olympic medals or a world champion they are all developed countries except for ethiopia and you know they don't top the chart they come uh, or kenya the marathon runners etc but most of these countries developed countries top the chart in world level or olympics you take you just go and check out the statistics just because their system is robust for their country people because when i was an australian institute of sports way back in 198 i'll tell you an instance 1998 i did uh, sessions there they were doing some research on uh, some of the athletes and they were preparing for sydney olympics so i happened to be there part of the thing for one swimmer they had around 10 to 15 specialists working on one swimmer we don't have the total number in india 10 to 15 people at that point of time for one swimmer imagine the system how robust it is so just imagine the other sport for one swimmer you have 15 support staff all world class people 
so we need to build that system not that we have a uh, uh, problem with the population the youngsters should embark on this and they are embarking on this in a very very uh, very sharp manner theory and practice oh, agree, there it beats there lies success otherwise we'll be talking till the cows come home agree there are a lot of lot of lack kind of uh, there is a lack of lack of manpower even if i want to consider the khelo india centers what government is thinking 1200 plus centers every center need to have sports scientists every center need to have the center manager the massure the strength and conditioning expert the sports psychologists where are they there is a there is a lack, there is a lack now <clears throat> in fact for the, for the audience uh, so if you have heard ramji was actually harping upon the practical for dr anand joshi was also talking and i am very happy to share that we are actually trying our best to give that kind of practicals ramji is coming ramji is flying from chennai he is staying there in bombay doing the theory taking the practicals people like dr majumdar p majumdar who was the dean of sports surgery of india who is obviously in touch with ramji much he comes and takes sessions now we send our students to the kokila ban who has one of the finest sports sections sports medicine sections right if you are aware about the kem hospital one of the finest medical hospital our students are actually going there getting the lectures taking the practicals including the dean of kem herself is taking session you can understand the kind of uh, practical oriented program that we have started because to be very honest when the, the if you have seen our website if you have seen the board that we had they are the they are the pioneers of sports science and all have told one thing very clearly if ism is starting something it has to be world class if it's not going to be a kind of practical oriented there is no need of starting in another sports science course it has to be different it has to be the best and we are trying our best and thanks ramji for that Uh, I am a no. believer in uh, practicals, uh, Amitava. Trust me on this. Uh, however, phenomenal you are in theory, but if it doesn't, your training, okay. I think, doesn't translate onto the field, onto the sport. Waste of time. Total waste of time. We have millions okay. of people doing the same job as us. You know. So, okay. Yeah. Sorry. I. Yeah. i'm sure the participants will be more inclined to learn about the opportunities a sports science is a very vast area it's, it's, there are a lot of nomenclature there are a lot of job profiles which are inside so i will be i'll be very happy if you can give some enlightenment that you know what are the key jobs after this degree programs the students can actually get absorbed into uh yeah because uh, different strokes for different folks you know um uh, i'm a very strong believer in personality trait choosing a specialty you know if you are uh, depending on individual personality you may be choosing the job which is which suits you and your intelligence and your uh, what do you call progression in place so for example somebody uh, who is an extrovert who is outgoing he wants to be he or she wants to be seen outside to be on the field person they may take up some jobs like strength and conditioning coaches or a coaches a uh, job or a what do you call athletic trainer or um, uh, any other uh, specific thing uh, pertinent to or even the commentator or a performance analyst you know any of those uh, things can suit them you know as far as introverts are concerned they always like to be in the background power behind the throne basically you see the sports medicine doctors you see the physio sometimes uh, some uh, physios also can uh, get into hybrid zone either in and out inside or uh, introvert or extrovert zone but uh, the sports psychologists the nutritionists the data collection specialists the performance analysts the exercise physiologist the biomechanist etc etc these are the people those who want to stay off the field and help the athlete from their space and their comfort and their knowledge uh, base so multifarious it depends on individuals what their aptitude is and massive uh, scope from sports commentator to the coach to the sports management personality you have a wide gamut of uh, what do you call uh, 
opportunities you can take but end of the day one man's food is another man's poison somebody is taking strength and conditioning i want to get into that may not suit you you may be very good in a, a sports physio domain or a in your sports nutritionist domain or an athletic trainer or etc etc you know some things are related some things are uh, totally different so idea is to see what suits your aptitude the best in a long term mid term and short term you know how you want to look yourself 10 years down the line we are not talking philosophy here we don't know what is happening tomorrow day after tomorrow we are not into that <laughs> you know we are looking at you have to plan 10 years ahead where you want to be 10 years or 5 years down the line whether this particular uh, job uh, suits you whether it's giving you enough knowledge enough growth all the things you need to see enough vitamin m because end of the day that also matters empty stomach never thinks you know they need to be earning well they need to be seeing progress at every stage of their uh, career so otherwise if you are stuck in one place with the same salary like a government officials doing then you are as good as a government official government servant they are not the owners you know <laughs> you know that that's why our, uh, we are stuck there so they should not be stuck there look at the opportunities they can have two three they can specialize on two three uh, varied uh, professionals it can be a very good strength and conditioning coach and a performance analyst or a exercise physiologist i i know people those who have done double phd's triple phd's unbelievable unbelievable minds brilliant absolutely brilliant but for that one need to understand where they need to be you know where they what is their aptitude how they want to progress what is the future they see in india or abroad whether whichever uh, uh, country you go it has to you have to be up with the same trend you know i know two three boys those who are done gone to lavro and uh, uh, griffith university have done some research works we have helped them in sport, from sports dynamics they are doing a phenomenal job you know we need to keep in trend with what is happening around the world otherwise you know uh, we are left far behind the chasing takes a long time so different strokes for different folks as i say keep telling it depending on the aptitude depending on the personality some have very short fuse you know they cannot be <laughs> in strength and conditioning or a physio <laughs> players may get whacked <laughs> so on a lighter note i'm telling but uh, yeah you need patience you need character for that you need to have a different character for different job profile isn't it that is that applies to any uh, profession similarly the same pro- uh, principles apply to sports science student when they are embarking on the new uh, what do you call uh, pathway so huge job and definitely learn see in india the pro- the beautiful advantage in india the cup is empty then the cup is empty you have full to, you can fill it up fully with your own ideas and ideologies and philosophy of work so that whether successful or not it all depends on you so you can take that as a model and if it is successful then you have others to embark on the journey along with you and take them along with you if it is a failure there is no problem at least you have tried if half cup full and half cup empty i don't believe in this especially because already there is a preconceived ideas and notions and uh, what do you call philosophy into the system which can be harmful to the new person who is embarking on the journey so when the cup is empty best time you know now is the time you know yeah great and learning definitely and learning is the key they have to learn keep learning every day learning no but true, even the true, greatest true. of the greatest uh, as a uh, strength and conditioning icon they all keep learning some of the best of the best in the world you know we are nowhere in the picture we are nowhere in the picture we are no that is the reality that is reality we have the best doctors we have one of the best doctors we have one of the best uh, engineers we have one of the best sports uh, uh, space scientists in the world you know we have some of the best in the world so software uh, personality in the world but sports science is not very far when our boys and girls put their mind body into it 10 years down the line we'll be a world leader till then 
will take some time. It cannot. Uh, it's like getting married today and expecting a child tomorrow. That is what we do. We cannot do that. Bro. So it's a process. Uh, Shatvika, you have raised the hand. Can you please put your query in the chat box? I will try to come back as soon as we finish. Now we we discussed about the roles. But uh, I'll be very happy if you can hop up on or probably, you know, give some idea which are the companies. I'm sure we can't cover all the companies because there is a lot, but at least few so that the you know, audience or probably the person who is thinking to have a career in the sports sites can have some ideas. Okay, these are the company and they, then they can search around. Massive, yeah. huge scope, you know, from yes. there, from... But few, few, few names will be very helpful. Yeah, I'll tell you, I'll tell you uh, from Sports Authority of India. Onwards, onwards. See the uh, how the ecosystem is built by Tata's in Orissa, or in Jamshedpur, or Reliance coming into the sports uh, field, building, uh, getting some big names into the system, or building the hospital, etc. Sports uh, related to sports science. You have Tata's. You have uh, what do you call uh, Jindal Steelworks. You have. Um, uh, quite a few. Uh, I, I'm able to get only these four or five big names. And you have other, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, OGQs, uh, those who are helping the athlete. You have Go Sport. You have other sports management uh, companies helping the athletes and also taking the support staff along with them in the journey, which is phenomenal for India. You know, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not able to mention all the names because it doesn't come to me right away. Uh, there are few people, those who are doing a phenomenal job from grassroots level onwards. Not that they are not doing, but they need good professionals supporting them. You know, you need good sports science students, as you earlier said, strength and conditioning specialists, good uh, physios, psychologists, nutritionists. You don't need high-end biomechanists, etc., etc., on that level. But to lay a foundation, but to lay a foundation, you need the best of the best. That is the difference between India and the developed countries. Here, everybody wants to get into Indian team straight away when they have one or two years experience. They will go by devious ways. I know people those have gone by devious ways there and muffed it up. So, the best of the best anywhere because when you are when the, when you are teaching the children of 8, 10, 14, 16, that is when the skill is learned, the absorption capacity, the motor learning skills are the, are the best. So, most of the, what do you call, uh, uh, long-term athletic development, the developed countries, they embark, they bring in the best of the best specialists for the kids. So that they learn the right movement patterns, right, right posture, right way of doing things so that they are set into a good path. Here, no. All riffraffs or uh, wasted elements will be sent to under 12 and under 14, under 8 and other. Are they not? Uh, you kill the aspiration there itself. You kill the children's aspiration, the parents' aspiration and the SNC aspiration, whatever the management aspiration there. It is finished there. So, idea is to and pay them well. Pay the professionals well. If you pay peanuts, you'll get monkeys. We are not last in line. Sports as a SNC, people are not last in line. They are as respected as a coach or a, or any any faculty. So uh, my take on it is, lot of uh, companies are getting into the system now. They want to hire the professionals. Fit India movement again, as you told, government is doing huge, and every state is embarking on sports science and building big uh, institutes, etc. You may need 10 lakh, 20 lakh jobs in the future of sports science and related allied activities. These are some other four. Chennai Super Kings, India Simmons has done an amazing job for supporting cricket and golf, chess and other things. You have MRF Pace Foundation. You know, they are one of the iconic uh, corporate when they started Pace Foundation way back in 1988. You know, one of the, because of Pace Revolution, we can talk now. It all started way back when Dr. Joshi was involved, when I was involved with Dennis Lilly, you know, to bring in our Indian system that worked for us. We designed a program from testing to training to assessment, everything we Indianized and rest is history for Pace Foundation where eight of the boys made to Indian team at one within a span of five years. 
you you can anybody can go and check the record from uh, 1998 till 2006 7 seven or eight of them made to indian team and they're all top notch top notch they're not uh, pushovers just be in the team because of quota system so <laughs> uh we need as i told you earlier we need to indianize it put your head on the block maybe i put too many uh, times the head on the block i lost my hair so great in fact uh, you you touched upon sports of of india you touched upon ogq and all before i actually ask a question related to sai some critical information or, or probably an information which i am personally very proud of on behalf of ism for the audience So ISM is an official knowledge partner of Khelo India movement, and when I'm talking about the knowledge partner, the, our students are going and they are uh, assisting the government officials, and uh, that is a, that is a very easy thing. A uh, full lot of knowledge, but the thing is that the main critical part which nobody is doing except ISM students and the faculties is ISM is curating and assisting in complete curation of the standard operating process of Khelo India. Yeah, absolutely. I think I've seen a lot of these uh, students go to uh, yes. go for the World Cup and IPLs and ISLs. You name it, uh, you have loads of I I some boys and girls there. You know, it is very nice. You know, you are giving practical experience, knowledge to them, which is second to none. You know, uh, absolutely important. Absolutely important. So you know, they realize it now, but once they when you have equal competition between. Two equal uh, professional. True, the true. The aspect of it will come handy at that point of time because we have seen innumerable number number of times where the with having two equal uh, candidates, the person who has got better uh, practical experience would always be considered than the person who is not so. You know what happened that day. Uh... We 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 all know Tata Mumbai Marathon. Now the Tata Mumbai Marathon is uh, organized by Procom International. So we were associated, and uh, ISM is the one who has created an impact report of Tata Mumbai Marathon, which was launched, where the CEO of IDFC First Bank, the country head of TCS, and all came. So I was very fortunate enough with our founder director Sri Nilesh Kulkarni on the dais. They were talking a lot about ISM students, how hardworking they are. Now, what they are thinking to have every edition by ISM students. So, edition one has been released as the impact report of 2020. Now, work has already been started for 2023, which has recently been conducted. Now, the best part is that when the senior vice president, Mr. Kevin, came to our college, they were saying, "You know, Amitava." During the event, it was only ISM students which which we saw. It's not like that, you know. I am exaggerating the thing because our more than one fifty students were across in the events, like you know, right from accreditation to data collection and all. Twelve students were part of the research team who were interacting and collecting the data. The sports science students were actually part of the medical team and were actually working at the back end. So they wonderful. Were saying, wherever you were going, you were finding the practical exposure and the ISM students. They were so happy. that's a key uh, amitava because i know so many of them are very talented i know some phenomenal physios in our country phenomenal strength and conditioning people those who are 100 folds better than better than me in every level not that i, uh, I can have a halo around my head no these kids and these sorry to use the word kids these uh, what do you call people are more talented and more knowledgeable than me when i was their age so imagine what level of uh, competence we are going to unearth in the future with giving the right opportunity to these people you know very important that is practical experience you cannot have a power pushing powerpoint presentation till they get bored especially after lunch everybody is sleepy and true even the person who is uh, doing the session is bored leave them that time give them the space and push them on to practical experience that will give them the best cutting edge difference between do to do and not to do, basically how is your experience since you have you have helped in the curriculum now you are coming and you know actually taking session you have taken theory you are actually taking practicals how is what is your uh, 
experience when you were teaching ISM sports science students? So I always enjoyed uh, because practical is my forte. Because I get bored. To be very honest, to tell you, I get very bored and uh, beyond a point to teach PPT. People, you have thousand lakhs of PPTs uh, available. What do you what do you teach them is that one way of looking at things. It is not my way or highway. It is one way of opening their eyes and ears to a varied uh, uh, pathways which can have. You have a goal, but the pathway what you take may be different. It has to be different, but the goal remains the same. But we can show them these are the pathways available, and take go ahead with that. That comes only with practical aspect of it, especially when you are designing a program, when you are designing doing your fitness testing and assessments, when you are teaching somebody something. The exercise physiology, exercise protocols, there can be huge variables, massive variables, permutation combination, running into crores, not lakhs. So, uh, I really thoroughly enjoyed uh, because they kept me kept asking questions. They literally <laughs> grill me like a, an interview, which is very very good, and I enjoyed that. I, it is also a learning curve for me. Uh, I learned a lot from them because they think differently. Some of them think laterally because no question is trivial. You have to keep asking questions. That is their job. And tomorrow, the athlete will ask you questions. You should be in a position to answer that. So, by asking questions, it doesn't make you a lesser uh, student or a lesser uh, coach or lesser uh, professional. So, I thoroughly enjoyed uh, being there. I think being the first time. Uh, now we will bring in something very, very, very different. Where. Uh, uh, First time the strength and conditioning coaches and the sports science students will learn, uh, which will be happening in ISM first week of March. You know, because I am a very strong believer in updating and bringing the bringing technology and marrying technology and tradition into one, so that you get the best desired results possible. You cannot shun either, so True. you need to marry it uh, prudently, so that bringing in new things bringing in new protocols bringing in a lot of new ways of thinking can make the professionals get into the next level or else you'll be lifting your collar up and was starting in india i'm the best i'm so i'm so uh, it doesn't uh, <laughs> cut ties anywhere you know outside the country so ism was brilliant i think uh, we are setting up a nice center also for them to do the practical aspect of it, yeah, it's a, it's an evolution, you know, because I also learned a lot of things, and you learned, the students learned, the management learned. It's a learning curve for all of us, and then we are stepping into the next level. The students, Good. students love your sessions. They are already asking when well, <laughs> is coming back. Uh, poor kids. I don't think they have seen anybody more <laughs> better. <laughs> they, they are already asking when Sir is coming back. Hello, yeah, Sir is coming back soon. You know, see, end of the day, I'm not a teacher. I, I, you know, I don't enjoy. I don't have patience for sitting in the classroom for hours together and teaching. No, I like to go out. You know, teach them on the field. Right. You know, it's boring. But somehow I restrain myself. Being Mumbai, Mumbai, you will go out. You will be run over by something else. <laughs> So I enjoyed that, and Mumbai, you know, it's a different ball game altogether. The natural energy of the place. Uh, yeah. If I want to ask you, the the it's a, it's a slightly tricky question because you have you have observed different sports science professional, and now you are a part of the curriculum, and you are actually delivering. Now, from your eye, from an industry expert side, if you want to have key three differentiators between what we are delivering versus what the kind of professionals and the and the lagging that you have found what will be th three critical points that we have imparted one is practical definitely practical oriented course if you want to elaborate probably two more that will be fantastic yeah practical is first and the foremost 90 percent don't do that you know uh, what do you do in practicals you have to have a system there, process there, and protocols there. Second, bringing in technology. 
the latest technology from sports science to injury prevention injury management the data collection etc 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 that is really we are not just bringing one equipment to just uh, uh, fit everybody we are bringing in various aspects of physiology and psychology into play where when these two meet the good physiologist and good psychologist meet and the pro and the processes meet there lies success again you know you need and the nutritionist you all come into work. various uh, people come into play idea is to bring in and explain and uh, taking it to the next level showing the path where they are going to be five years down the line show them that is the pathway which it is recommended to go but they can trend their own path 100 percent they have the free will to do it but we can give them guidance on these parameters one is practical whether it's practical on strength and conditioning practicals on fitness testing practicals on uh, physio assessments practicals on uh, other uh, specific uh, musculoskeletal screening etc etc very physio oriented and other parameters specific to uh, what do you call uh, program planning and other things how they are able to implement the, the theoretical aspect of it into practice through program planning and periodization etc that is done practically you know which is which is very very key which is a huge uh, game changer for high peak performance it need not be a very uh, what do you call uh, old method of doing things because periodizations have changed over the years it has evolved over the years some of them don't believe one school there are different schools of uh, sports science some don't believe in it some believe in it some are halfway cat on the wall so what is good for us may not be good for somebody else so we need to evolve that's why we are trying to set up something which is very indian very how do you look at uh, the indianness of uh, people because you know why the physiology we i spoke about six or seven variables what is different the food habit the psychology aspect of it the physiological aspect of it the facilities available uh, to the athlete the what do you call the nutrition the, the pro other professionals involved in that uh, 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 development of athletes etc etc and the geographical locations and the climatic conditions environment conditions all these things are variables how do you attend those variables and bring it into the system India was not India is not one country. It was imagine Africa and uh, uh, South America, etc., into one country. India is like that. You know, every state is different. From north to south, east to west, the mindset is different. Physiologically, they are different. The philosophy is different. The uh, what do you call food habit is different. Then how can you have the same protocol? What suits somebody from Punjab or Maharashtra or Bengal to Manipur to the Kerala or Tamil Nadu, etc. How can you do that? You know, since that is a thing which we are embarking embarking on in IASM, which is very specialized, very very specialized. We have just taken one baby step, yeah. miles to go for us, but we are we are in the right direction. Where do you see sports science? So you talked about five years. I would like to go one step ahead, ten years down the line. Where do you see sports science? Because ten years back. Now and ten years down the line, I can see you. You you might be experiencing a huge transition. <laughs> I am not. Uh, uh, I don't have the faculty of Nasser Damas or uh, Baba Vanga. <laughs> Whatever I can garner now, it's going to be phenomenal. It's going to be a game changer in India. That's going to be one of the leading uh, professionals in, profession in the country, because a country is judged by two things. Two main uh, thing, a country, or if you uh, want to call yourself a, a proud Indian, is controlled by two things. One is military. Second one is sport. The country's image. So military, we are a top notch. You know, we if yes, we are top notch in the world, top five in the world in military uh, science and uh, our soldiers, our NSG commandos, or any of them, SPG group, you name it, cutting across anything. We are top five in the world in that. There is no compromise, isn't it? Similarly, we will be in top five in 10 years down the line because we have the wherewithal. We are still, we have the Brahmastra. 
we don't know how we need the correct code to use the brahmastra all these people in the future will have the code to use that and then you unleash it sky is the limit literal universe is the limit for us i may be bit red bit overboard on being very poetic and other things but i am trying to get an example going <laughs> you know simile going so that is uh, going to be a top 3 jobs top 3 profession in the country in 10 years down the line 100% in fact with the advent of technology is is the change is happening is massive exactly and uh, people from iit and iism are getting into the field so you see a huge surge you know so we so will be I... getting somebody from there also for our iism students when we are coming in march because uh, they are embarking on something very different and they have done a research and research they got papers data we help them in getting data collect data etc so how it's going to be different for indians how it's going to be different for our athletes so that knowledge will be passed on to all the students in fact for the audience since uh, ranji is talking about the technology and the change very happy to say that uh, we have signed up an mou with aim that is atal innovation mission of niti ayog and our students are actually curating a white paper on the scope of technology in india which is covering the management the operation as well as the sports science aspect wonderful wonderful that's a way to go yeah. and nilay yeah. is constantly evolving i know phenomenal our students our students are really you know kind of putting lot of and hard work the support staff and the support staff uh, the people involved in iism you know it may not be pertinent subject now for me to talk <laughs> but the people involved in iism the support staff is absolutely brilliant all Thank have you. the same goal all have the same passion from top to bottom everybody is the same that's I think the beauty of that organization that's the key when your founder director himself is in the campus every day asking about the quality we are yeah. equally motivated very few very few sports people are successful business people or educators you you find let's see how many of you find uh, top 10 uh, people those who are involved in sports to be a good businessman at the same time good uh, educator to pass on the knowledge you will have one or two in the world nilesh is one of them i would say because i haven't seen i have no quite a lot of professional not only cricket from racing to tennis to etc uh, they are not uh, having an academy is different yeah true football game but be an educator that's a totally a different ball game good us to all of you keep it going thanks thanks and um, i think Any we have yet we'll take uh, maybe i can give them 5 minutes yeah sure i was about to say we have around 2 3 minutes maybe we can extend it to 5 I'll minutes them, uh, <laughs> indian stretchable time yeah 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 so um, the it's open for the audience you can raise the hand very quickly we will try to cover at least one two questions i can see two questions at least in the chat box shatvika if you want to ask or probably akash if you want to ask you can raise the hand and you can ask the question if you are there or anybody else good evening sir thank you for the session and i wanted to know whether there are any fellowships or diploma courses available for the sports science courses or not na uh, amita question is for you i raise my hand chatika <laughs> we uh, our admission team is there okay they will be sending you all the details i think she is uh, working with jharkhand uh, cricket association she is a physio doing a great job with the grassroots level and we need a lot of people like her getting into the ecosystem you know as good as to you satvika good job thank you so much thank you sir akash you want to ask quickly yes sir uh, sir yeah. good evening to both of you sir and to good other evening. audience as well so my question to you sir is that uh, as we are currently seeing the proliferation of uh, t20 leagues in the country right now and not just cricket but also in other sports as well sir yeah like we can experience we can see in kabaddi and volleyball in kabaddi, volleyball as well kho kho as well sir yeah yeah so in that aspect sir how difficult it it has become now for players to balance in between their in while representing the country 
and while participating in the leagues and also to like keep up the pace like by by keeping their performance intact and also by keeping their body uh, up to the up to the race to participate in the leagues because mm. as we and just addition to that sir because uh, y- your first answer was in regards with the cricketers right in the country so my question is that recently we saw one of the premium cricketer in our country uh, specifically a bowler he was named in the squad but then just hours ahead of That's the match the yeah hours ahead of the match he was he was rested from the he was rested so that brought a lot of embarrassment as well from the for the administration because a lot of experts raised question that what kind of a analysis was there and what kind of a evaluation of the fitness of the player was there so sir your comments on that sir please it's a massive question uh, <laughs> okay i'll try to answer as much uh, possible as much as i have knowledge on that thank you sir uh, first thing um, regarding uh, the number of leagues fantastic it's see the ecosystem is growing you know corporates are coming into it uh, I, I'm, i'm trying to answer the question what what is the scope there's huge uh, scope is there as far as our boys are concerned our uh, boys and girls are concerned to get into the team and get into the next level there is there lies an opening for that you need lot of uh, practical aspect of it your experience plays a very important role in competing with the foreigners those who are taking up the job you know you are competing with it's not a equal competition for sure but they are competing we'll be there second one there is a they will definitely look out for indians because a lot of indian players we understand our players body and mind better than anybody else you know we know that it's like somebody some yogi coming and teaching yoga beer yoga dance yoga and other things to indians we embark on that because of so many so much of ignorance and because it's fashionable but real yoga is here you know you should uh, understand that and right. real yoga is uh, going to be our snc our sports science people those who are embarking on this in the future because we know our system very well right sir right that is going to be a uh, uh, crucial uh, point in the future because the players would love to have indians so that they can it is not only physical it is mental also they can open up freely the language barrier is not going to be there right. you know you can explain things in our own language you know our own mother tongue your own mother tongue or the common language you right. know those are the advantages the go foreigners come they stay for two months three months and go i'm not blaming them that is their job they do collect money and go they don't have that emotional attachments is also very important to our players and to our team to be uh, part of the ecosystem there is also an emotional attachment you right. know it is not uh, just professional that, that's why we have fan clubs etc etc some are mumbai indians club some are chennai super kings some are uh, delhi capitals etc as far as ipl is concerned but having said that ecosystem is growing you have opportunities coming up for that you need good level of practical to compete with the people in future it will be mostly snc i mean not sorry to use just the snc because my domain uh, uh, sports science students from our country getting into getting job into the system third one fourth one is what uh, akash oh injuries or oh, recovery sorry i somebody asked me yesterday i think uh, regarding mandy mores uh, recovery right is, in hindustan times uh, i mentioned just if you are you have to uh, how do i put it you uh, you cannot prepare to fight otherwise you 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 need uh, i i'm not able to get the uh, uh, right sentence co- cogently i will come it's in back of my mind i'll tell you recovery is very important as important as training right. you know we don't give importance to recovery protocols at all whether as active or passive recovery uh we don't give important which is also includes your diet uh, patterns a lot of involvement with the physios and the massage therapists they play a very very important role in that very limited role on strength and conditioning as far as your recovery is concerned they have to take your hands off you know and give the responsibility to others to make the athlete where he or she is before the match you know at the right. peak level of uh, recovery 
so that's a different ball game altogether that's a different subject we are not even embarked on that subject in india you know uh, right. there are recovery specialists around the world at right. every level there are specialists growing you know a sprint specialist you have a strength specialist you have a conditioning specialist you have an athletic trainer you have an endurance specialist you have a jump specialist you have a throw specialist see the uh, uh, variables so right. uh, you need to mix and match all these people to der- deliver the best concoction fifth one regarding the embarrassment yes of course of course uh, it is a bit embarrassing and as i told you in the initial stages that somebody has to take the responsibility or bell the cat and uh, we cannot bcci is doing everything uh, uh, what to keep the players happy and in comfortable position it's up to the support staff like i won't blame the player at all because player trust the support staff trust the organization trust the people those who are taking care of him but if you are letting them down for your own uh, ulterior motive then it's seriously wrong you know that is uh, the support staff should take the responsibility for that whoever is given the fitness certificate whoever is training them or not they have to take the responsibility there is no two ways about it i don't want to mince my word on this because i may have a lot of enemies i may get a lot of new friends but i don't care but i have to be honest in what i doing right sir thank you sir thanks a lot yes thank you uh, is 6 7 i think uh, we can actually call it an end ramji i need strepsils <laughs> <laughs> no, if, a, if a match has started in time the match has to end in time <laughs> we all are sports persons so audience thank you very much for joining in if you have queries do reach out to uh, the admission team uh, we have a website ismall.com right so you you reach out and every queries will be resolved i would personally request you do visit the campus we have a beautiful campus uh, and you and, and people like sneera chopra sachin dendulkar all have actually come and they have signed on the wall so you can get a very good photo of when you are coming in the campus as well apart from taking the admission absolutely i i would like to tell one more thing before all of them leave is uh, you know you can contact amitava i mean the person uh, the main man here and i from my point of view amitava there are amazingly talented people here i know quite a lot of people i think you should invite them to iism and if they can be part of uh, you know uh, spreading knowledge and they being a part of that sure. observing things and see we can develop a ecosystem well and somebody from physios and snc or a psychologist sure. they can be part of so the more people you get involved into the system the better development it is otherwise they don't have place to go most of them are stuck in one place and they don't know how to develop their knowledge you know if we can do that for all the people those who are signed up and those who are keen they can visit our uh, iism be part of the uh, what do you call interns if they want to do anything and that will you will be doing a great job for the society and community happy to work on it happy to work on it i'll reach Please out to you we will we'll, we'll find out something we will work you know, for sure because they do most of them don't have somebody to guide them here you know they are most of them are to themselves i'm happy to support with your guidance the guide is Please, i am always there for them any time and uh, whenever i am coming if they are going to be there coming absolutely fantastic sure. little, you can give them some certificate that they are doing interns and just an idea i'm ruminating please uh, you know uh, do the talk to your management it will be sure, nice sure, if you sure, sure. we'll That'll we'll work good. on it we'll work on it we'll discuss together and we'll work on it thank you thanks Absolutely. for the time the audience thank you for your time thank and you all uh, and uh, pleasure always as usual to be part of uh, iism and talking to amitava and all of you thank you so much for your patient hearing and we'll catch up soon in iism sure thank, thank you thank you thank you